Hey everyone, thank you for watching. Today I am going to be exploring the co-host functionality of Cisco WebEx. You may have been familiar with the alternate host functionality in the past. This is the next iteration of that. However, it allows you to have more than one alternate host uh, to have multiple co-hosts. So these functionalities uh, are, are gonna be similar, but there's some new functionality that's available as well. Uh, you can actually assign co-hosts before the meeting, whether it's a scheduled meeting or a personal meeting room, and I'm gonna show you how to do both of those. And we're also going to take a look at how to assign co-host privileges during a meeting, uh, you know, as things are live. So with that being said, uh, let's dive in and check it out firsthand. All right, so to get started, you wanna log into WebEx. Now to do this, go to uh, your site name. So in my case, testsite.webex.com. It's probably gonna be the name of your organization, .webex.com in some form or fashion. Uh, get logged in and you will be dropped at this screen here. Now the first thing I wanna show you is how to configure your personal meeting room for a co-host and kind of go from there. So first things first, come over to preferences and click that. Once you are inside of preferences, you wanna hit the My Personal Room tab, and there are a number of settings here for your personal room, uh, including the, the title you want for it, the link, the pin, all that type of stuff. You wanna scroll down a little bit and look for co-hosts. Now there are some details here if you wanna check that out, of course. What we do is uh, so select our option, uh, ensure that it's checked. First of all, select our option. The first option allows you to specifically name individuals inside of your organization by email address, and they will be populated here. So I have Control Hub User 3 already added. I can certainly go ahead and add more. The second option is that the first person to join my personal meeting room who has a host account on this site. So they have to be part of my organization and have a host account on the same site as me. Uh, they can actually do it as well. And last but not least, I can have any attendee who has a host account on my site. A couple things to be aware of there. Personally, I would make it a short list. This again is your personal meeting room, so it's like your private office, if you will, in the uh, from a meetings perspective. So keep it a short list and go from there. And when you're done, scroll to the bottom and hit save. All right, so jumping back to the homepage now, I showed you how to do this with your personal meeting room. The next question, of course, is what do I do with scheduled meetings? Well, let's go ahead and click schedule and take a look at that right now. So I have a scheduled meeting here started. Uh, this is scheduling it online. Of course, this is gonna be very similar if you're using productivity tools or the uh, scheduling add-in inside of Outlook. Because there's a number of different looks there, I figured I would just come right to the scheduling tool since everyone gets this view. What we do is scroll down and not far down the list here, we have our attendees section. Now, of course, we see we can have up to a thousand people attend. Uh, we can add individuals. Here we see individuals I've added so far. And you'll notice this little uh, person with the checkbox here. What I can do is actually check this. And you'll see now that it's been checked, remove the co-host role from this attendee. So uh, you have the option to toggle that. I could make these two individuals co-hosts and when the meeting starts they will in fact be uh, you know given those co-host responsibilities one other thing I want to show you is under scheduling options if you expand that you will see a co-host option there as well there's a little help menu that pops up if you hover over the uh, the information icon there this is essentially the same set of options that you had in the personal meeting room menu you can choose to have uh, a specific list. You can have the first person that joins with a host account, or you can have all attendees who join with host accounts become the co-host. The last thing I wanna leave you with is how to assign co-host uh, manually. In this case, you see that I am Adam. I have a window open here. I'm in a meeting. I have Adam's office, which is a device actually called into the meeting as well. And I have another client user. This is a mobile client user, but uh, in this instance, this really does not matter whether they're a PC, Mac, or mobile device client. So I am, again, I am the host. I can actually come to these users and assign co-host role. Uh, I have to confirm that role then as well. And once that individual is a co-host, you will see it displayed 
under their name as well. Now this gives them the ability to do a number of host functions. They can technically actually end the meeting as well. So you wanna be careful with how you delegate this out. I'll show you a, a warning message in just a second that they will see when they go to leave a meeting. But uh, you can give them this functionality. This allows them to mute and unmute, uh, expel people from the meeting, do those host type functionalities uh, from their either device when applicable or from their client, which again is the full experience. If you need to remove co-host responsibilities, you can certainly do that uh, as well. I will mention that the option to give or grant co-host responsibilities is something that is exclusive to the host. So if I actually make uh, this Adam's Office device the host, you will see that uh, once I do that, I am now a co-host. However, I cannot make people co-host now that I am simply only a co-host rather than a full-blown host. Something to look out for, for sure. Finally, when you go to leave the meeting, you want to be extra careful not to end the meeting because you are now a co-host. You actually could screw the meeting up for everyone. Just simply hit leave and the other participants will remain in the meeting. Of course, this message looks a little bit different depending on your device, on video endpoints, and on the mobile client. You just want to make sure that you're hitting the leave meeting rather than end meeting option. Hopefully you found that helpful. If you have questions, comments, tips, or tricks, please leave them in the video comments section below. I always love to hear from my viewers. I have some documentation in the video description as well. This lays out different details of what the co-host functionality is, how to assign it, and so on and so forth. Definitely check that out. With that being said though, if you're new here, consider subscribing. Give me a thumbs up if this was helpful. I wanna thank you for watching and I hope to see you back sometime soon.